Welcome to Roleplay Cafe. It's Dale here. I thought I would do a little bit of a deep dive in my response to Day 7 prompt of RPG A Day 2024, which is an RPG with good form. Now, I don't want to seem like a selfish plug here, but I have to be honest when I say, to me, Dark Age of Man, RPG fits that bill. What I mean in particular is that being involved in that project, one of my aspirations and goals was to see manifested in the whole beauty. The form contains mechanics, setting, everything, right? But everything needed to work as a whole like a bit of a mousetrap. Everything in there is necessarily needed, simplistically applicable, and that maybe feels tacked on from a different game. You know, there, there's always games uh, that are not like that, on the whole, where a mechanic seems like an afterthought or either tacked on or trying to feel like that. Like, look at the, the thieves. Uh, roles in D&D &D when they a part of the whole. Now, I mean, there, there's reasons for that, I know. It was put on after the fact. Whatever, but there, there's, there's a little bit of a disconnect, right? Which can throw off an intuitive assumption that we make in a game like, oh, well, I would think that we would naturally, well, no, it's different, right? So, there had to be uniformity important. Less interference. Less interference. So distilling uh, basic attributes, which attributes and things like attributes and rolling above a number are kind of ingrained in, th in, this, in the hobby as an intuitive assumption. So when somebody sits down, if you throw them a different, so we wanted to step away from that. But we try to do it in a way where it could be distilled down to just the primary components. Because what we were aiming for was to build a game that would facilitate more in-character, as-character play. All right, for one. So characters that could be developed inside of the setting, as well as a setting that would, that would require repute being a primary attribute, that it was important to the inside of this society. So it needed to be represented too, as well as the luck, which was the catch-all mechanics. Those are the base, the core. Everybody can understand. We did it in a way even more simplistically that you didn't have to roll three to 18 to devise what, what point would be added, what attribute point would be uh, added to uh, your roll, distilled it down to the point of fracturing from the focused intent of the game. We needed a simplistic engine. And it's a little bit, it's funny because it's like, you think simple is easy? No, there's a lot of, so when we do that, what is necessary? What is universal? What is utilitarian? What is intuitive? Those criteria to make the whole, to bring it down to that. And it could be extended into, uh, yeah, they could be e you know, easily represented. You know, we had that aha, yep, yeah, it's built in. It's built in. You can get negative components to your, your mind score. Okay? You become sick. You become diseased. Well, if you've got some kind of <laughs> your repute in society, if all of a sudden you're an outlaw, then you get negatives on that, right? It's the point is it's distilled down to a base thing that could be applicable ac across these base attributes. Whether you bring them up, bring them up. that's added to your or subtracted, you know, to your detriment or to your benefit in game. As you play, the a part of that form 
had to be realized that in that, it is an extension of their, representing their player character in play and the presenter from the world's position. So when they're utilizing it, there is, a, to me, a beautiful harm. This is to retcon this, go back a step. We purposefully, as well as beneficially, don't create more interference. We purposely don't put guide rails up. Either for one, like, uh, you don't want to act out. Um, that should bind people at the table to a certain uh, level, even there's that character, to act as a... You, you want to play uh, authentically to your character or to yourself and for the situation that is coming down the pipe toward you. It's being in play represented fluidly with minimal uh, weights and measures through what is transpiring at the table through narration. And you can see this to more so readily be able to respond to what is, what is happening. But we needed that flow to go. The players to have a like I said, there's no extra rules of God rules, guidelines that, that mandate what players, that line they needed to walk, we eliminated that from one. Social contract keeps people bound. Automatically, it's there. It's not part of what we need to, to incite some engagement in player cre creativity. There is purposely... Like if you're playing, for example, a mage, you will engage in the world. You automatically, intuitively, live in the moment, see what is transpiring to address it. But everyone knows the weight of that description will bear up or down with what you're trying to accomplish. So it naturally anchors you as a player, and in this case, as a mage, to how extreme you want to go. And in situations, you may be backed up to where you have to do something extreme to get out of a situation. But there are attempts. Well, the people at the table have, with how this affects the accomplisher, something that may be a little bit outside of the, the realm of what uh, my abilities may allow me to readily do, which those numbers that you have, as far as on your attributes, defined your ability. Second, precarious efforts overall. Yeah, I may be able to intimidate of lesser. That's just. universally applied in that uh, form.